part of the movement on Kauai. And so we went to Basel, Switzerland. Syngenta is based in Switzerland. That's the hometown. We call it into the belly of the beast. They, they, that's where they're based. They're a Swiss company and they're, they're around the world. And so this is our delegation in front of the Syngenta headquarters. This picture is before the Syngenta shareholder meeting. So after the gentleman said, do you want to speak at our conference? I said, yes, let, let's, let's do it. And he said, by the way, Syngenta is having their annual shareholders meeting a couple, about 400 meters from our meeting. Would you like to speak inside that shareholders meeting? And I said, you can do that? I said, how do you do that? How do you get me inside the shareholders meeting to speak to a thousand shareholders? And he said, we, have, we own one share of Syngenta stock. And we'll transfer it into your name. And so that's what happened. This is me going into the hall before the, before the shareholder meeting started. So we can go ahead to the next slide. MultiWatch is the name of the organization that invited us. Fabulous group of people that, that young and old, the, the older, more experienced people, had made their bones, I would say, shut down nuclear power plants 40 years ago. Uh, the, the, the young environmentalists, there were labor union people. And their mission, MultiWatch's mission, is monitoring transnational corporations based in Switzerland that are back bad actors around the world. Companies like Syngenta. Companies that are based there, but yet doing things all around the world that they would never do in their hometown. And that people in their hometown don't know about it. So next slide. So this is us arriving. It's a beautiful country. The weather was beautiful. Uh, we, we raised the money in the community. Hoppa stepped up with some money. Other people in the community stepped up. And the three of us were able to go. And we had the first, we had some panel discussions. There were people from Paraguay there, uh, people from uh, Pakistan, uh, labor people from Pakistan who had been shut out of their jobs, labor uh, organizers who had been, their jobs had just been eliminated overnight. They come to work, you don't have a job anymore because it's not there. And it, all because they were organizing their workers, you know, Sagenta's workers. A guy from Paraguay who also was there to talk about environmental impacts in Paraguay. There was a man from Holland talking about, uh, he, he's a very, very, he has an uh, institute in Washington, D.C. He's won a lot of very prestigious prizes in education and agriculture. Talked about the answer to feeding the world is not industrial agriculture. The answer to feeding the world is agriculture, local, local, small agriculture, located in the areas where the food is eaten. And, that, and, and another thought, he, I never forget this part. He said it's all about money. We know that instinctively. But he said a 99 cent value meal is not 99 cents. It's three dollars and ninety-nine cents because you've got obesity, you've got diabetes, you've got heart disease, you've got all these other climate change, all these other impacts. So we might as well pay the price up front for that food and pay the three ninety-nine and, and be healthy. But it was a it was an educational experience. Uh, we had uh, yeah, we had other speakers. Next slide. Okay, this is ourselves. This is our host uh, from Switzerland. This is uh, from Pakistan. And that's us standing in front of the Syngenta. Uh, that was our field trips. We did, we did touring. We went like vacationers where we did pesticides and, and uh, toxic waste dumps, actually. Next slide. Uh, we met with politicians. This is uh, part of the National Council. Uh, and this man was fabulous. He spent about two hours with us. And he couldn't believe what was going on. That they don't understand. When I was talking about disclosure, he says, what do you mean, disclosure? I said, so we know if they're going to spray next week to whether to avoid the area or shut our windows. He said, you have to pass a law so you know when to shut your windows when they're going to spray these poisons. He was blown away by this whole thing. And part of the trip, and he didn't know this either, a lot of people don't know, in Switzerland, GMOs are banned. You cannot grow something, and you can't eat GMOs in Switzerland. But you also can't use atrazine, paraquat, and four others. Pesticides. Syngenta is a distributor of atrazine and a user of atrazine, and over 66,000 pounds of atrazine is used in our state. 66,000 pounds of atrazine is used here. It's against the law to use it in Switzerland. Okay, Paraquat, they use it here. It's banned in 36 countries, including the country where this company is based. And this blew, this, this guy didn't know that, and it blew him away. It, it, and it's just people don't get it. It's, yeah, next slide. He ended up actually writing a press release supporting our cause that was, was printed in the local paper. Next. 
and this is a translation. We had a lot of, lot of attention. Talk about tools. We have a legal tool, we have community tools, we have law, passing laws, but we also have, I think the most important tool is shining a light on what these guys are doing. Shining a light, educating people, and, and we shined a big, giant light there. We were, the media was reporting on us. We have a very compelling story to tell, the Hawaii story, the Hawaii story, and, and we told it over and over again. Next one. We met with other, these are, this is in the Parliament of Basel, again, very supportive. They ended up passing, or they tried to pass a resolution and only lost, I think, by two votes. Uh, but it's pretty cool, right? They're, Switzerland's Parliament in Basel is discussing resolutions dealing with Hawaii and Syngenta and Kauai. Uh, and it's just, a, just really cool, actually. Okay, this is one of our, our uh, field trips. This is the, the uh, Rhine the River here. And along the Rhine are giant warehouses that are sealed up, that are toxic waste dumps. They don't know what to do with it because they, they had the problem before, Syngenta and other companies released atrazine into the Rhine when it was legal before. They dug up all the soil and it's setting in warehouses uh, along the Rhine. Uh, it was an interesting story. BASF has also got a headquarters there. It's a German company, I believe. Next slide. Okay, this is some of the media. Uh, this is, uh, these guys marched in one of our marches that uh, Powalter was talking about. They never thought their picture would show up in three daily newspapers in three cities in Switzerland, mm. but it did. We had uh, French documentary filmmakers that are following us through the trip. They'll actually be on, they're on Hawaii now doing reporting. So the world increasingly is finding out about what these companies are doing. The next one. Uh, here we travel to uh, another, another town called Lucerne. The, the trains, I mean, what they say about Switzerland being on time and watches and everything is all very true. You know, you could, you could, a train would pull up, it's supposed to be there at 301, and you'd say at 301, the train is there. When we got this train, the train was late. It was like 15 minutes late, and we complained to our, our Swiss host here that the train was late, he was top bragging about the train's been on time, and he said, no, it's a French train. <laughs> and it was, it was a French uh, He doesn't, we didn't drive, we didn't get the car the whole time we were there. We walked to buses or on the train. These are, uh, this is right in front of the Sinchetta head. Oh, this is the largest labor union in Switzerland. Uh, we met with them talking about labor issues uh, with these companies. Next slide. This is a, a group called uh, ATTAC, A-T-T-A-C, Swiss. ATTAC, I believe, is similar to the Occupy organization. It's very active uh, in Switzerland. And we told our story there. The story we told, there's three of us. Malia Chung opened the, we had a kind of a formula. Malia Chung opened the discussion with historical cultural context. She talked about Hawaii feeding itself in the old days, you know, with, with the system before all these guys got there. She talked about Kuliani. She talked about values, Hawaiian values. And then Fern Rosenstyle, uh, talked about the pesticide. She's got. A, she's a science major, and, and, and then I would talk about the law breaking. Uh, and then we move on. Next slide. We had a petition that we launched. We launched it kind of late. We didn't want Sagenta to know that we were coming too early because we were afraid they would shut us down. And so we only we launched the, the, the petition late, uh, but we still had over 7,000 signatures that we presented to both the government there as well as. Uh, uh, Sagenta itself. This is the, the day of the shareholders meeting. It's cold and it's raining and we're there and all these people here are friends of ours in Switzerland who stood out in the cold and the rain to hold our banners and support our community. And we were just in this chicken skin moment. These people show up to help us and uh, holding the banners. This young woman here is working on her, her master's degree. Uh, and she's focusing on the issue here. She'll be coming here in a couple of weeks. And so this is before I went in to speak. Next slide. And so when I went in, I had been coached, if you would, by others who had done similar projects in the past. They said, Gary, you know, you gotta be strong. And you have to ask for something that's part of the rule. You have to address something on the agenda. And you don't know if they're going to shut you down, you don't know if they're going to turn the mic off, you don't know if they're going to boo you, you don't know how much time you have. And there's about nine, there's about 950, just short of a thousand people in the audience, shareholders. And the board is sitting 
uh, at the top. And so I went up to speak, and Fern was there with me. Fern, she carried a camera in. And to be clear, there were no signs that said no, no cameras. No signs said that. But they kept the media out. The French guys wanted to come in, the local television, they didn't let any media in. Fern did bring a camera in, and she had it. And when I started to speak, she started to uh, film. And so it comes in, the film is in two segments, and we'll show you the first segment. Security came up to her and told her uh, to stop filming. And so she did, she stopped filming. Then they came back and said, I want your camera. And she says, I'm not giving you my camera. And they made her leave, and as she walked away, she turned the camera on again. And so it's in, it's in two segments. Are we ready to go? I don't know if it's going to work. Okay, we'll try it. It was working a few minutes ago. The, um, so I spoke, and, and I had to speak on something on the agenda. Well, you, you want me to try to uh, find the connection? We'll do a refresh on the YouTube page. So I was told to find something on the agenda, so I chose the annual report. You know, it's got treasurer's report, et cetera, annual report. Command. So I did the annual report, and I said with my remarks that I want to tell you something that should be on your annual report, but it's not. And then I made my ask. And the ask that I made was, I'm asking the shareholders and the board of directors of Syngenta to withdraw the lawsuit against the county of Kauai, to honor our laws, and give us the same protections and respect they give the people in the local community. That was my ask. And the people in the audience, thank you. People in the audience clapped also. It was really amazing. At the end, I think they got it. They, they understood that this was coming from my heart and our community is being treated disrespectfully and they can do something about it. Uh, so, because I didn't know how long I was gonna be able to speak, I spoke, I asked, I made the ask first in case they pulled my plug. And then I asked them, I said, imagine if Basel, imagine if your community, if you drove around every day, taking your kids to school, going to work, and you're driving by GE test fields every day. And you smell stuff, and you wonder what's going on, and you don't know, and people in your neighborhoods are saying, well, you know, I'm getting headaches, kids are getting sick in school. Sea urchins, 30,000 sea urchins died off Kauai's coast. Nobody knows why. So what if that was in your town? What would you do? What would you do? You would ask your government for help, right? That's what they would do in Switzerland. That's what we do here in Hawaii. What happens? They ask our government for help. We step up, we help them, and the company sues us. And so the people, again, they understand it. What if this happened where you live? Uh, they got it. And uh, Fern left. Well, we've got a video that's, that's very short. We've got a, a couple of them, actually. So I'm going to, while they work on the video, I'm just going to summarize that. So I spoke. We left. And then uh, the media... It's still going. I, I say, you know, Switzerland Syngenta is the act, political action that just keeps on giving. Uh, we have uh, a week or two after we left, there was, the, well, whenever the March Against Monsanto dates, okay, the March Against Monsanto was a certain day. In Basel, Switzerland, they had never marched before, and they marched then and, and carried Syngenta. It was March Against Syngenta and Monsanto, but they carried the Shame on You banner, our banner, down the streets of Basel with over a thousand people marching, and it was just incredible. So you think these people on the other side of the earth, literally on the other side of the earth, helping us out. Um, there's, it continues to get media over there. Um, the, the company, people ask me, well, what did they say? What did the company say? So I spoke, and I was told that after I speak, they're going to respond. So I spoke, and then the, the chairman of the board and the chief executive officer responded to me. They'd already known basically what I was going to say, because before you speak, you have to sign up, and they have to tell them what you're asking. So they, they knew that all right away. The, the CEO of Syngenta is an American, just for what it's worth, he's an American. Uh, the the C, uh, chief, operating, chief operating officer, I think, is a, is a Belgian. Uh, but they said, thank you, Mr. Hooser, for being here today. We understand your concerns, and we want everyone to know that we're good citizens of Kauai, and we follow all the laws, and we only spray pesticides on our lands. 
And I said, thank you very much. And I'd just like to clarify something that, yes, you spray them on your lands, but you spray them on your lands adjacent to schools, hospitals, and homes in my community, and you're not allowed to do that in your own community. And they said, thank you, you're done. And I left. There were other speakers there speaking on labor issues there we go. and other environmental issues. Okay, I think we're going to do it. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to speak today. My name is Gary Hooser. I'm from the island of Kauai in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I presently serve on the Kauai County Council. I'm a lawmaker, a resident of Kauai for 40 years, formerly served in the Hawaii State Senate. I was a senator there and director of the Office of Environmental Quality and Control for the state of Hawaii. I'm here today to add information that perhaps is not contained within your annual report. And I appreciate your patience with me, allowing me to share the message from my community in Kauai. I'm also here today to present a petition, a petition from thousands of residents of our small island. There's only 60, 65,000 people live where I live, and we are very, very concerned about our community and the impacts that Sagenta has in our small community. And that petition is very simple. It asks Sagenta to honor the laws of our community. Withdraw your lawsuit from the courts of Hawaii and to give us the same respect, the same protection that you give the people of Switzerland. Right now, Sagenta sprays enormous amounts of atrazine in the fields around homes, schools, and hospitals where we live. Atrazine is not allowed to be sprayed in your country. Sagenta sprays enormous amounts of lies of paracol, which is banned here in 36 countries around the world. And you do it daily in our community. There's four additional highly restricted chemicals that are sprayed daily around schools, hospitals, and homes where I live. Imagine if you had to drive and live in a community surrounded by GE test fields, and every day, Every day, you know that they're spraying toxic chemicals in the areas around where you live. Imagine if the schools in your community had children getting sick like they do in my community, and going to the hospital in ambulances, throwing up, while Sagenta is spraying fields right next door. Imagine if the doctors in your community, like the doctors in my community, are concerned about birth defects. I don't understand. believe that there is 10 times the rate, the national rate of birth defects in a small hospital where I was not filming. And they don't... So that's, that's when the, the security leader turned the camera off at that point. And then the security comes back to her uh, just moment, moments later and uh, ask for the camera. Is this the next one? Okay, and then she, she proceeds to leave, but she turns the camera back on again. Control <laughs> the local laws. That is not true. That is an untrue statement. Sagenta has not complied with our laws. Sagenta has chosen to take us to court. Sagenta has not complied with our property tax laws. Sagenta has not complied with our grading and growing laws. And they continue to misrepresent their position to me as a council member, to my community, and to you. So again, I'm asking you with great respect, great respect, withdraw the lawsuit from the county of Kauai, honor and comply with our laws, and treat us with the same respect, the same dignity, and the same protections that you give the people of Switzerland. Do not spray chemicals in my community that you cannot spray in your own community. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Aloha. <laughs> Yeah. 
Great. Thank you. Good one. There was another, it, it's really kind of fascinating. This is, a, you don't need to watch this movie. That, that's the four minute video we can, to, to close it up. But it is surreal. I mean, this experience, as they're giving their annual report, you have fields of corn and grain and, and all these flowers and the music, and it's just all so pastoral. And then they're putting up uh, graphs and charts predicting their income for the coming year. And it's all based on chemical pesticide sales. All of them. They have little asterisks. If we only get this one approved by the United States, we're going to make another $100 million next year. If we only get this one approved by these countries. And, but yet, it's superimposed on this really wholesome, um, you know, it's really, really strange. Um, outside in the lobby area was a fabulous uh, buffet and wine, and let the record reflect, I did not eat anything at all. <laughs> I left there. So I'll take a few questions before or we do this video first. Maybe we'll do the video. Those of you, some of you may not all be familiar with uh, the, the movement on this issue that's happening in Hawaii right now. Uh, as we went to preparing for Switzerland, uh, Teresa Tico, who's an attorney on Kauai, who's uh, been helping us a lot, she's also a filmmaker, we asked her to do this next video, which she did in about a week, and we were showing this everywhere we went to. So we'll watch this, we'll take some questions, and then we'll go from there. Go ahead. Most people think of Hawaii as paradise, but Hawaii is also ground zero for the research and development of genetically engineered seeds. Five of the largest multinational chemical corporations in the world, Dow, Syngenta, DuPont Pioneer, Monsanto, and BASF, are all using Hawaii to develop seeds that are genetically engineered to withstand higher and higher levels of pesticides. Over 3,000 permits have been granted by the U.S. Department of Agriculture for field trials of GE crops on the tiny landmass of Hawaii, more than any other state in the nation. On Hawaii alone, these chemical companies purchased 18 tons of restricted-use pesticides per year from 2010 to 2012. A lawsuit has uncovered that DuPont Pioneer sprays pesticides approximately 250 days a year upwind of the residential community of Waimea, Kauai. These toxic chemicals have transformed parts of Hawaii into one of the most toxic chemical environments in American agriculture. Many residents are concerned about the public health and environmental impacts of this chemical use. School children and teachers near one of the fields have collapsed multiple times after smelling noxious odors. Residents near the test fields report high rates of congenital heart defects, 10 times the national average. When the state failed to protect the people from chemical company activities, Hawaii residents marched across the islands. Counties began epic battles to pass laws that would protect their residents. After a historic battle, Kauai County passed Bill 2491, a law that created modest buffer zones around schools, streams, and other sensitive areas, and required disclosure of pesticide use by large users of restricted-use pesticides. On Hawaii Island, the County Council passed Bill 113, which banned all new GE crops. And in the November election of 2014, the voters of Maui County passed a moratorium on all GE crop operations until a health and environmental impact study is done. But rather than comply with these laws, the chemical companies brought lawsuits to fight every one of them. In August 2014, a federal magistrate judge ruled that only the state can pass these types of pesticide protections. That decision is being appealed. With county legislation tied up in the courts, Hawaii residents are back to fighting at the state level. Several bills introduced in the 2015 legislative session would have created pesticide buffer zones and required disclosure of pesticide use by large users. But these bills were killed. The fight continues, but we need your help.
but that's, that's my question. The, the, I'm not sure about the, the pesticide uh, approvals of the ban. So they banned, they banned atrazine in Switzerland, so they're not allowed to do that. But, the, but I know the GMO ban was a ballot initiative. The people of Switzerland put it on the ballot and voted for it. It wasn't lawmakers. So it was the people. It's like the Maui one. You know, the, the, the people voted. And it's actually going to be coming up for another vote, I think, in, in two years, 2018. They, the, the politicians I talked to in, in Switzerland are, are not that much different from ours in, in some ways. Because they said, they recognize Switzerland's a big employer. I mean, Sagenta's a big employer there. They can only push so hard. They're not sure what they can do, but they'll try. Uh, but the, I think a lot of them was just the awareness. They're not aware of what Switzerland's doing. That's what Multiwatch, like, that organization is trying to do, trying to make their own countrymen aware of what Sagenta is trying to do. And that's what we did, big time we did it over there. Uh, so the, the community, once you hear that, once you hear, like you said, you know, they're they're, they're peeing in the pool in these people's house over here and they're not allowed to do it over here. People don't, you know, they're not, they're not comfortable with that. Uh, other, other questions? Any other questions? Yes. Yes? Uh, how, do, how, do they, how do they get the, uh, how do they get the vote on this? Do they, do they have an issue? Do they collect signatures and then they put it on the ballot? Yes. Well, so how come the block on a county doesn't have that? Okay, so the question is, that's a very good point. So the Syngenta folks, well not Syngenta, Swiss, the Swiss population gathers signatures to ban genetic GMOs in their country. And they were successful getting the signatures, put on the ballot, and they voted on it. So Maui County did the same thing, and they're in court right now. The way the law works in the state of Hawaii, counties have the right to do that. Initiative, either change the charter or change the law by signatures. The state does not allow that. So in theory, the city and county of Honolulu, or Maui County, Kauai County, uh, could gather signatures just like we said, just like you said, and change the law here. And I would argue that that I would we should all think about that. You know, Maui did it, and it's in court right now. But there are other other initiatives. Uh, right now, the question of the of the ability of counties to ban GMOs or ban pesticides in court. So it probably doesn't warrant doing another ballot initiative since it's until the courts decide. But there are other types of ballot initiatives that we might be able to do, dealing with farmland, dealing with pre the preservation of, of land, dealing with minimum wage. We're, we're, our organization is, is looking at broad-based issues. And, and so across the nation right now, it's a little bit different from what we're talking about, is this national effort to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. That's being done by ballot initiatives in many places. And so there are, and that, that's a tool that the city and county, you folks, could use. And if anyone wants to talk about that later, I'd be happy to talk about that. And HAPA, as an organization, might be able to support someone. Other questions? I mean, let me get someone who hasn't asked yet. Yes? Who in the legislature killed their bills? Who in the legislature killed their bills? Uh, without question, and it was a state house. Uh, Committee on Agriculture, uh, Cliff Suji is a chair, uh, but I'll have a caveat to that, okay? I served for eight years, and a lot of people like to point at, well, it's a speaker, or it's Cliff. The majority makes a decision. So the majority of the body acquiesce to those committees. But if the, if the short answer would be the, the uh, House Agricultural Committee. Uh, but if the leadership of the House wanted that bill to pass, it would pass. Uh, but they have this huge misinformation and disinformation campaign by the industry and by uh, institutions in our own government. Uh, Syngenta, for example, repeatedly says atrazine is not banned in Switzerland. They say it to the media, they say it every day, they were rebutting me in our local paper, and if you care to see it, you can Google the New York Times, February, Syngenta, atrazine, and there's a whole article about how Sanchita's going around telling everybody it's not banned, but it is banned. So they keep saying this stuff. They'll say pesticides are safe. No one's getting sick. If you read the literature, the, the, just the basic literature, the, the American uh, Cancer Institute, American Academy of Pediatrics, it's clear. You look at areas that have intensive agriculture and intensive pesticide use have higher rates of a whole wide range of diseases and cancers and stuff. doesn't mean you're going to be throwing up, but it means you... This impacts your health negatively. 
And it's about the difference between chronic and acute. Okay, it's about living across from the fields for 30 years and having small doses blown on you every single day and on pregnant women every single day. And they say, well, there's no proof, there's no proof, study it, study it. Well, we can't study it without disclosure. Right, so they won't tell us. Uh, and so we're fighting, but yes, yes. Okay. This was an experience with Governor Ige. Uh, you've had some personal experience with him. Would you give us your perception of his receptivity to ideas such as the ones that you enumerated tonight? And can you give us an idea? Are there any legislators who you feel a certain consciousness where they can receive this kind of information as opposed to those legislators who are pretty close minded? Okay, D D Governor Ege, I've served with for eight years, and, and I think he's an honest man, you know, I think he's a hardworking guy. He comes from a more conservative environment than I do, he's an engineer. Uh, not to, no offense to any engineers in the room, but uh, uh, I think he's open on the pesticide issue. I think he's open to uh, increasing regulations on that. If, if some, I think if something got to the legislature, he would sign it. Uh, a lot of people push back from the word GMO. It's like it's too toxic, they don't want to talk about GMOs, whether it's, and Kyle mentioned it, it's not about, for me too, it's not about that eating it necessarily, it's about all the other impacts, the impacts on my community, global impacts on the food supply, you know, unintended consequences, you know, it's not, it's not about throwing up after you eat a Dorito. Uh, but, so I think he's, he's, he's our governor, and I think, you know, we've got a good shot uh, with pesticide regulation anyway. And I think he's aware, of the need, the political need, as well as the real need of expanding agriculture on all levels. Food sustainability, not just agriculture. Food sustainability. On Kauai, the uh, Agri Agribusiness Development Corporation is a state, quasi-public-private state agency that manages state agricultural lands. Almost all their Kauai lands are leased to these four companies. So these are state lands, these are ceded lands, these are public lands. That, is, uh, that are turned over to these corporations who are doing this action. And just recently, the good news is, and they, they will say it's not because of the good work of, of, of Kyle or our community, but uh, Pioneer has closed down some fields and are apparently there's about 3,000 acres that they will not be using. That's 3,000 acres that won't be spending pesticides on. Syngenta also has just cut loose, stepped away from over 500 acres. Uh, they do have much greater buffer zones than they did before. And they'll, it's kind of crazy. They'll say well, they're voluntarily complying. Yeah, after we hang my hammer on the <laughs> sleep on the sidewalk in front of the building, they're going to voluntarily comply. Um, yes? Well, I'm only 16, and I go to school every time. And she's going to tell me that she's going to be a black car coach. So is that true? What can you're, you're 16, and your teacher's telling you your votes don't count? Like National. No, I would say absolutely not. Your teacher's got no business telling you that. I mean, I think, I think your, vote, your voice counts. Okay, your voice counts. You, your voice counts probably more than most people in the room. Uh, yes, let's give it up. Your voice counts. Some of the most powerful testimony I've ever witnessed uh, has been from young people like yourself. You know, we wouldn't have a bottle bill today, which, which takes a lot of bottles out of, out of the trash, if not for the testimony of young people who came, came forward and said, why don't you do something for us in the future? You know, and so I encourage you to, to stay involved. Uh, yes, and your voice does count. Yes, was it? Yes. Uh, firstly, I want to thank you for bringing awareness to the problems here on Hawaii and in Hawaii, but uh, I read an article that Monsanto was trying to buy a so what happens if Monsanto acquires Syngenta? What happens if Monsanto acquires Syngenta? Right now, Syngenta has the largest market share of pesticides, and Monsanto has the largest market share of GE test seeds. Uh, so if they merge, that would be a, a you know a Godzilla, if you would. Uh, and Monsanto's trying to do that to improve their image, because Monsanto is like the devil. Right? Uh, so I don't know what's going to happen uh, to that. But It'll make our work easier, I guess. We only have to focus on two of them. <laughs> you know, it's 7.30. Uh, I, I'll take a couple more questions, but uh, I am actually flying back to Kauai tonight, okay. and we have some cleanup. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think you can... Uh, 
Do you think you, you did a great job there in Switzerland for this GMO movement? Do you think you can do that same job for our people, the Hawaiian people's movement in Washington? Mm. Explaining to them what they are doing to our people? Occupation, Thank suppression, you. and oppression of the Hawaiian people. You. You know, the question is, can I, I did a great job in Switzerland. Can I go to Washington to see and help move forward the uh, Hawaiian nation? and explain to the people in Washington, D.C. And you know, I count on people like Walter Reilly and Ikaika Hussey and others who are involved in this movement to give me guidance. You know, I'm not from here, uh, but I'll stand next to you and next to Walter and next to all of you and share whatever manao and ever juice I got to help you guys. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Louder? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, I want to say he's right. Okay, this last election, I won by 82 votes. 82 votes. And, and I'm not the end all for politicians, but I love serving and I think I'm doing a good job. Without those 82 votes, I would not be uh, serving on the Clark County Council. There's a lot of ways to serve, but I would not be able to have the position I have now. This gentleman over here had, yes, sir. Yeah. Can, uh, 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 short question because we got to close up. <clears throat> you link the TPP and there is a vote to pass back from tomorrow and not come out in the dark hours. Dark night. On Sunday. And we're supposed to be here because we are not alone. This is something that we can come with a lot right. of this. Thank you. The, the TPP is a key issue on this and there's no time right now to discuss the whole thing, but it is, it is a really, really bad news for uh, the world. And so we need to all be aware of it. And I think uh, most of our, our uh, congressional people are on the right side of it, but we have to hold them hard to those positions. So thank you all very much for coming. You guys close up. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you. That was the uh, Oahu meeting for the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action.